If you are an IntelliJ IDEA user who has been using GitLab to host your repositories, we have exciting news for you. JetBrains has collaborated with GitLab, which means IntelliJ IDEA would have better support for it. To start with, with the latest IDEA release, you can review GitLab merge request within your favorite IDE. Are you wondering what are the benefits? To start with, leaving comments from inside the IDE, which means being able to avail all the IDE benefits, such as syntax highlighting, navigation, pulling the branch to run the code and make sure it still builds, all without context switching. I believe you would have other questions too, such as what GitLab versions are supported? And what about the support for the CI pipelines? And does this collaboration bring in additional benefits like another enterprise free GitLab account? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> to answer all these questions and more, I'm excited to have with us my colleague, Dimitri, product manager with the IntelliJ IDEA team who has been working on version control tools since 2016. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining for another IntelliJ IDEA live stream. I'm your host, Mala Gupta. And now let me add Dimitri to the stream. Hello, Mala. Thank, thank you for introduction and uh, hello for everyone. Thank you for joining our live stream today and also hello everyone who is going to watch it later. Um, I'm pretty lucky to be here. <laughs> it, it, it's a pleasure to be learning from you, Dimitri, because I know we have, we know that you work a lot with the Git tools and you are the boss when it comes to supporting the Git based tools in IntelliJ IDEA. So before I let you take the center stage, I have a quick question for you, which I assume a lot of folks would also have is about what versions of GitLab are currently being supported by IntelliJ IDEA? Yeah, good question to start with. Uh, yeah, a bit of remark. Uh, it's since GitLab API is a bit tricky, uh, we mm -hmm. have to carefully choose what options we provide and where. So uh, full capabilities we are thinking of would be available only for the latest 16 uh, version. And of course, mm -hmm. uh, when we're talking about, for example, multiple approvals that are on the ultimate feature. Uh, so mm -hmm. this would be those features that are part of GitLab Ultimate are of course only supported mm -hmm. there. So uh, for now, what we have in the product uh, supports mm -hmm. GitLab 16, uh, I think 16.10 and above, maybe, maybe something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we are currently researching options to support 15 mm -hmm. and even maybe 14. But we have no intention mm -hmm. to support any earlier versions. Uh, so we are going to support only those that GitLab officially has uh, some support for. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's that's the plan. Okay, makes sense. And uh, Dimitri, you also mentioned that you might talk about some of the features which are not available to uh, all. You mentioned that you would be using a nightly bill. Is that still a thing? Because I, I <laughs> yeah, just want like, to be... <laughs> uh, what, what, those features that are currently nightly uh, that mm -hmm. I would be sh showing here, they are minor. UI adjustments. Mm -hmm. uh, I okay. will talk later about what we are working on. It is okay. it is a nightly partially, but it is not ready to showcase yet. So it's disabled. Okay. Um, okay. But I'll I'll mention some things. Yeah. Uh, okay. Primarily, both what I was having in mind is like some minor minor things that are already enabled. Okay, I just wanted to mention this because just in case if someone's trying out and they notice things which you are showing which are not in the version that they are trying out, so they would know that you are using another version. So, yeah, thank is, you for that. Yeah, and uh, before I let you take the stage, let me share some quick housekeeping details with everyone who is watching. Please use the YouTube chat to post your questions. We'll try to answer your questions as you post them. So you don't really need to wait till the end of the session. And the most important question, yes, the session is being recorded and will be hosted on IntelliJ Ideas YouTube channel and also on JetBrain's Twitch channel. So if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, now is the time to do so. And if you like to do session, which I'm sure you will, do not miss to like the video. So uh, without further ado, Dimitri, I would let you uh, move forward with your presentation. And let me add your, OK, this, your screen is already here on the screen. I'll be backstage. So if you have any questions, just 
call my name and I'll hop on to the stream again and have fun. Thanks. Uh, okay, before we actually I starting to show us uh, a quick story behind this. Yeah. So as Malo mentioned, we started to, to work on this plugin with together with GitLab team. What that means actually is that they helped us providing some APIs that were not available earlier. Uh, and that is why some of the features uh, we are planning to have in the plugin would only be available for later GitLab versions, which uh, would include the changes GitLab team that did for us. For example, an, an important part is the batch comment submission. When you submit all the comments in the review as one, so it allows you to get a single notification instead of a separate for each one. It was previously not available via API, only when you do it via web. So this is one of an examples. There are other minor things, uh, but yeah, we are doing this together or with the team, uh, with a good lot. Uh, so that was kind of intro introduction. And let me then show you what we have already built. Uh, so when we were beginning to build something for GitLab, uh, there there was a huge demand, you know, just build for us a GitLab integration, please. But the question is, what is that GitLab integration? Yeah, everyone has their own needs. So we did some research uh, to find out what are the most important things and pretty obvious, but still, uh, when we are talking about uh, IDE, the, one of the most important things is doing code reviews in the IDE. Uh, the good question is how often actually people refer to IDE to do the reviews because like nowadays, you know, a lot of things are web-based and the web uh, interface is pretty good. And uh, most cases, in a lot of cases, web is enough. Uh, but still, there are cases where IDE provi provides better things like navigation. So when you have a huge, huge change set, it's pretty fine to go to the IDE and basically browse uh, code there. So the main scenario we basically focused on when building this integration was uh, support this scenario when someone first uh, takes a look at the web, understands uh, that web is not enough and then goes to the ID. Yeah, so that has its consequences in some interfaces uh, uh, that we have not all the features of the web inside the ID and so on. So uh, let me start now. Uh, here I have a version of GitLab with actual GitLab project opened. Uh, so when IDEA sees that the project is connected to a GitLab host, um, so when basically there is a URL pointing to GitLab, you get this merge request to window. Yeah, and currently the main thing we built is of course merge request support. So uh, a lot of things are yet not built, but they are more or less planned. Uh, let me first talk about merge requests, and then we can probably discuss what are the future. So merge requests, uh, you get that merge request to window. Uh, here, I'm not logged into GitLab with any account, so I have an option to choose. Actually, if you do any Git operation from this, uh, for example, fetch, uh, ID should also ask you uh, to log in with something. For example, yeah, here, it, it asks you for token, allows you to generate something. Yeah. So I had an interface only to show you basically that uh, this login works. So I have another version of idea, of idea here, which is already logged in. So let me switch there. Here. Uh, here we have the same GitLab project. Here we, uh, it asks us to select basically uh, which actual repository we are going to look at. Uh, the reason it asks is because basically this is a fork. And for a fork, you know, you have a bunch of URL of main repository and actually the upstream. So we have here two URLs and the interface asks which actual repository you want to connect. Let me first connect to the GitLab itself to upstream. Uh, because like it has a lot of merge requests and we can look how the actual list is done. So here we have all the filters, uh, some assignees, for example, if we, see, see, uh, we can select authors, we can select. So basically all, most of the filters of GitLab are here. We have some predefined things, quick filters. So for example, 
if you want to see only those that you need to review, you select this and it sets a predefined set of filters. Also, this set of filters is basically safe. Well, I'm not a member of GitLab team, so there are no uh, requests for me there. Uh, also, you can see in the list uh, all the details that we consider most important for this view. So basically, you have a name, you have some ID uh, when it was created. So tags, if you want to see tags, uh, we have a label that there is something, but like to see all of them, you need to basically hover to see if they are tooltip. Also, it shows basically who it is assigned to. And the author, author is specified as a text here. So those are assignees. And here we also see if there are any pipeline failures. It makes basically kind of easy to navigate. Uh, well, but what if you, as I tell, told you earlier, it shows list of the requests for a single repository. What if you want to see it for another one? Yeah, to do so, you need to basically change the repository by going to these three dots and selecting another URL. So here is my fork. So let's go there into the fork. Uh, nothing there yet. So let's do something so we can create a merge request and review it. So here we have a project. Uh, I have some changes shelved already, so not to do them here. So let me just apply this shelf. Here we now have some changes within the files. So let's commit them. Uh, a proper way is probably create a separate branch to work on this. So MR1, for example, then I commit. Uh, so the idea of these changes is basically add some attempt to uh, add the open in the JetBrains ID button to the web. So let's commit, then push. Here, select the direction. It's the right button. Double check that it's the right remote and right branch name. So pushing. It asks me which account I want to use because for the sake of the this demo, I logged in with two GitLab accounts. So, and it asks which one I want to use for this particular operation. So let me pick one. And um, by the way, all these accounts, they are visible in the settings, GitLab, here you have them. Uh, so back to the ID. So it's, uh, I, I have pushed. Now I need to create a uh, merge request. So how it's done? There are several ways. Uh, currently, there is no yet a version, uh, like an interface inside ID to create it, but we are working on that. For now, you have several options. What you can do, you can do, you can go to the console for here, for example, to see the output. And here GitLab asks, uh, offers to create requests right away. It's one way. Another way is of course, go directly to the uh, browser. Here it is. So refresh the page. I just pushed and here it offers me to create more requests. So let's uh, try using the link from the ID. So here we are. Prefills all the pages. Let's just use the template and create my request. So as I know, as I mentioned, uh, we basically uh, focused on a scenario when someone first looks in the web. So we are creating this merge request. I as an author created it. I assign it to someone. Yeah, I have another account there. To review. So yeah, let me select it. So that account now receives a notification through email or through a messenger or whatever is set up in the company. So usually it's some there is some system of notifications already. So that person receives a notification. And now can review review the code. Uh, so let's see uh, how it looks 
for that person. So here I have interface for that. So here is the request that I just assigned. Yeah, let me go in. So here are all the details. This is a branch, but like it's pretty small change. But let's consider it is not that easy for me to understand and I want to review it better. What can I do here? So I can go to my ID. Uh, here I need basically go to to go to the GitLab page uh, and I need to switch account, yeah? So as you remember, I initially logged as uh, one of my accounts. So here I can switch it. I go to uh, double lots, select the choose account. So here I can, can choose remote and here clicking on the avatar, I can actually choose the account. So I should chose a different account and let me choose the correct repository here. So here I can see that request, here it is. So let me log, double click to get in. So what we have here, this is our view. Uh, it opens in separate tab for basically you can open up as much uh, requests as once as you want to. Uh, if you for some reason prefer to uh, work on several at once, I don't know, uh, but uh, there are cases when you might want to switch between maybe two, uh, especially if they are related. Maybe there are several repositories and they are uh, all, also a merge request is actually uh, covering several repositories. So here we have some basic things. Timeline opens automatically, but if you somehow close it, you can click view timeline. The main info here is actual changes of the files. So it shows what has been changed. Uh, there is one commit, so nothing about exact commits details here. It shows exactly now what's going on with the re request itself, you see? So we have here checks state. So if you, so we just like a generalized message, like uh, are there any checks? Have they failed? Have they basically passed? So we show it at a glance, so you can at a glance understand if it can be merged or not. If you have some reasons, I need to see more on the details. You can see what's going on and click on each of these would navigate you to the actual check in the web. Uh, and here you see it's like well, one of the important things is that review is not passed and uh, we are waiting. What I would like to highlight here is that we went with an idea of like a most important action of in a particular basically scenario. So in particular, some situation, for example, here, uh, someone created a request, signed review. So now uh, what would be the most uh, possible action for the person? So one would, could uh, submit another review like request, uh, sorry, um, author can request another review. And here, as the review is assigned to me, the account basically that I was logged in with. So it considers that I'm responsible for review. So the most favorable action is basically I do the review. So here we have the submit review. So let's do this. Let's take a look. Yeah, by default, we open the diff. If you need more details, you can of course jump to the actual content and see what's going on. Uh, yeah, so here's actually the edit part. And it seems for me there is some error here. So let's suggest fixing it. So to do this, you press the add button here. So let's change it to a proper ID. Yep, so let's see how it now looks in the web for the author. So here's my request. What has changed? Yep, here it is, appeared. If I go to basically changes. Ah, oh, it has not yet there. It is not yet there because basically the review is not done. So I just edit a comment in place. Yeah, you see. Uh, 
So let's like take a look at another file. It seems kind of fine for me. So let's say submit review. Uh, minor issue, otherwise. And approve. So you see now status is that basically review has been approved. So what's, what's happened next? So a review part is kind of done. So what happens next? Uh, now the author needs to take a look what has been done. So let me switch back to the original author account. So here is the request. So now we see approved review. And here we have a uh, message that something, there is some comment. In the timeline, I see here was a comment. It was a proof, there is a comment. So let's basically see what's going on. Here is my comment. Let me then change it. So yeah, diff is not writable because actually it is a diff from a review. So I go to the actual sources and change it. And now, Commit it. Commit and push. So it's a trivial fix. So let's do exactly commit and push. push. Yeah. Here you go. Uh, now, again, the reviewer uh, gets a notification that something has changed. So now he has, he can probably again go to a web. But let's uh, see. Imagine that they prefer to see it in the AV. So. Again, changing the account. Yeah, when you are basically not doing two roles of the same machine, you don't need to switch back and forth. So you have a, the same list. It's much easier. So here we are. And now you see a review includes two commits. And uh, I don't want to review the entire thing once again. I'm interested in basically in a fix. So I can select the commit I'm interested in. Uh, if there are more than like, Two or three, you have you can navigate between them using these buttons. Yep. So here, here is the fix. Yeah. So let's say I resolve this. Done. What else? What's interesting here? So here I reviewed without actually switching to that branch because, like, it was already there because, like, I did it from the same machine. Yeah. But if a reviewer basically is on a different branch uh, when they get notification, so they can go by clicking here and check out. So when the corresponding branch is checked out, you get this message, merge request. No, uh, it's basically it's ID. So a branch widget clearly shows you that there is a merge request associated with this branch. So it's kind of easier to you. So, and if it's also allows you to basically quickly navigate back to the tool window if you want. Uh, well, that's, that's actually it for the main flow that we were covering. Uh, the idea of quickly doing, checking things in the IDE and having comments. Yeah, uh, it's pretty easy uh, in terms of scenarios. Yeah, but like, unfortunately, not that easy to implement. It was so we had. It, it had taken some time. Uh, it's not a final solution. I mean, so it's not where it stops. Uh, we have much more plans around this. First of all, uh, when we are talking about reviews here, so here, uh, like we have these commits. Uh, there are people who prefer to review in IDE totally and they want to go commit by commit. So this uh, pop-up is not very comfortable for them. So we would be changing this control in time in, in light scene. So when, once you click it, it expands and you have lists there always. Uh, what else is going to change here? So for now, as I said, when we click on a file, it goes to a diff. Diff is not editable. Sometimes 
uh, navigation from diff might not work correctly, for example, like this. And it happens because probably maybe some mismatch between diff and actual sources. Uh, and since the main reason for people to go to IDE is actually read the code, not the diffs, diffs are kind of fine on web. Uh, what we are doing is actually bringing the review controls into your editor. Uh, so in future versions, once you get onto a branch, uh, you'll have all those comments right in the editor. Of course, optional, can be hidden and so on, but like you would be able to do reviews right from here. Uh, we call it so so-called review mode. Yeah. Uh, that's probably one of the most important parts in terms of review. Another one uh, that we are going to change in sh short future is actually the way to create new requests. So as I showed you, currently you need to click some links or go to the web. It's not that hard, but would be great if ID could help you with that. So that's what we are currently working in. So the idea is that once you push, or maybe along the push, you would be configuring uh, your merge request. So push automatically creates it. Uh, what else? Uh, I think these two are pretty huge in terms of like productivity boosts. Uh, what else you have in mind and what would be coming to the product? I expect this question would arise is, what about CI CD integrations? So GitLab is primarily uh, a DevOps tool. Yeah, it has a lot of pipelines. So we have these details here, but well, what to do with this? So, uh, as I said, it's not yet there, but we do recognize the need. And one of the further steps is actually bringing a proper uh, CI integration. Uh, that means you would be able to see running jobs, you would be able to see what's going on, like browsing logs from the ID, troubleshooting it was more importantly. So we would think of a way to make it troubleshooting failed checks uh, first class citizen. Uh, what else I would like to notice? Well, there are a bunch of possible uh, UI and UX improvements, like better support for uh, suggested changes, yeah. Currently, it's not there. Uh, well, it is to an extent. If you type a markdown here, uh, it would be rendered in web as it suggested changes. So we do not yet provide uh, some helpful controls for that, but like, yeah, we have something to propose in this area as well. Uh, well, honestly, I would think that it would be it for the basically what we have currently in the project. So I'm, if you have any questions you would like me to answer, I'm already ready to cover them. Thank you. Hey, Dimitri. So that, that was good. I, I enjoyed the session. And yes, we have a lot of questions. So let me start with the first one. So uh, there was a question by Shogren. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing the name right. It talks about, does it work with an on-premise GitLab server? So there was another yeah. person. <laughs> absolutely, okay. uh, absolutely. Okay. Uh, well, GitLab is of course more uh, used on, as on-prem. And of course mm -hmm. we do support. Uh, the thing is that when you use an on-prem, you first need mm -hmm. to create an account. So you need to go here. Uh, uh, you know, my screen here. So you need to go to accounts first and add there. Mm -hmm. So we need to specify the URL of your server. Uh, we are not doing it automatically because of like some API limitations. There is no way to easily uh, discover GitLab server in the network. And we do not want ID to basically scan your network. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so. Yeah, so it would be nice if we find a way. Uh, again, GitLab team is helping us, but like for all the versions, it would work for on-prem, but you have to first manually add an account. And then you get the tool window and then you get all the things that would be there later. Uh, Dimitri, you just mentioned that this would work with the olden versions as well, because uh, I have the same uh, person with a different, um, um, comment and uh, the person mentioned that this is not showing the GitLab options for me. So is it really 
due to the version that they are using because uh, they are using 13 as of now? Uh, no, uh, it's more likely because you need to add an account. Uh, the certain version, if you add an account there, mm -hmm. uh, the certain version would like it would fail, but it uh, would not hide the controls. At least should not. So you okay. you should probably have the tool window, but it will show you an error message. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, so I think the reason is that you have, mm -hmm. don't have an account. If it doesn't work, please don't hesitate mm -hmm. to contact our great support team. Or submit an issue to, to our tracker, and we will definitely take a look and if there's something wrong, fix it. Okay, so I I think the none. Oh, I I missed this one. So I think another person already answered it, and it says. Thank you. Uh, okay. <laughs> so Thanks, yes, Luke. Thanks, Thanks, Luke. <laughs> yeah. So um, as I mentioned, a lot of folks do had uh, questions about whether particular versions of GitLab would be supported. So do we have any roadmap on if certain versions would be supported and till when? Well, I think we covered that already. So uh, okay. let me uh, reiterate. Uh, GitLab itself supports uh, 16, 15, and to some extent 14 with security fixes. It doesn't support 13 and older. Uh, we have no plans of supporting versions that out uh, of GitLab itself. So GitLab mm -hmm. says 13 is outdated. Sorry, we are not working with that. Um, okay. So sorry, Alexei, but like uh, you need to update GitLab to have these features. Sorry. So there's another question by Anshuman, and uh, he's asking how GitLab repo for atomic Kotlin functions are redirected from one pod instance of IntelliJ IDEA to GCP instance cloud shell. Uh, like I, I'm not quite sure I understand the question. Is it about somehow about remote dev involved here? Uh, because like, well, maybe you have a better idea. Redirect uh, from one okay. instance I... of IntelliJ to such VM. So yeah, I'm kind of confused. So, so I don't, don't get the question. So Anshuman, if you are still watching and if you could add more details to your question, then probably we can address it. Okay, so let's talk about the other question is Yevgeny and he's asking in terms of internals, how much of this plugin was built using the idea plugin API versus bespoke functionality purely for this product? Uh, it's a great question. Actually, uh, while building GitLab, we were not only building GitLab, we <laughs> were uh, also updating GitHub we were also mm -hmm. having other plans. So we were basically moving out shared parts of the code to a separate model. Uh, more, that model mm -hmm. is called collaboration tools. Uh, it could be used by other tools. Uh, it's also used by space reviews. Uh, it could be used by whatever you might want to build. For example, if you have some review server in mind, you can. But uh, so to some extent, there are limitations. So there are uh, common components, first of all, UI. But prop actually, most of the part talking to the server is server specific. So UI is likely you could use it, but you would have mm -hmm. to implement a lot of functions to basically query the server and submit things because API differs a lot. Since you mentioned space, the other question is related to space. Will the merge request experience be the same in space? Mm, yeah, more or less. Um, with some basically uh, specific things for space. Uh, but yeah, uh, already uh, we rebuilt the space plugin UI. It, it resembles this one. The flows are the same, of course, with some mm -hmm. uh, space specific. Okay, the next question is about uh, from Codenuts, and he's mentioned do I have to press submit review for the author to see the comments? Uh, as I showed, no. <laughs> <laughs> because currently you, you can you can have basically two things. Mm -hmm. uh, you can submit each comment as a separate comment, or you can basically do at least in web. Yeah, you can start the review. Yeah, let me probably show you. So it's not there yet. Um, as I said, GitLab didn't have an API to basically batch submit comments. It is yet to come. Mm -hmm. And once it is there, you would be able to create a set of comments 
and submit review. And all those comments go once. Uh, and in this case, yes, you would need to press that button. For now, uh, and this, uh, as it was in my demo, I use the regular mm -hmm. comments. So once I create a comment, it appears right away. And uh, basically that's it. You don't need to submit a review. Uh, submit a review actually manages the review state. Uh, for Ultimate GitLab, for example, there is a feature that requires a review. So mm -hmm. nothing could be merged until a review is actually done and approved. So this one uh, is uh, essential for that flow. Okay, so the next question is, does the functionality only work with the new uh, GUI style or will it also work identically with the old style? Uh, I wouldn't call it identically, uh, well, because it would look a bit different, but yeah, in general, yeah, flow is the same. Uh, it is not something that is limited to UI. If you prefer mm -hmm. the old UI of idea, sure, it would be there, maybe looking a bit different, but Mm -hmm. All the things are there. So functionality is definitely there. The next question is by Tuke. He mentioned our team is watching from Canada. So do you have any plans to integrate issue management, time tracking, for example, activity by branch? Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, for now, no. It's like on the down, like down of the list. So before okay. we are trying mm -hmm. to look at issue integrations, well, mm -hmm. what we might do is like completion in commit messages that help you to basically manage those stuff. But if you would like mm -hmm. some UI in the ID to manage issues, to create them or something like that, it's not in the current roadmap. Mm -hmm. We are doing before the review, then mm -hmm. CI CD, and then maybe something else. Right. And I also think you would need some written um, blog post or something for all the information because I I noticed that you are repeating yourself a lot of times. So <laughs> I, I shared the link to your earlier the blog post that you published. But yes, we would need another one. So the well, next, yeah, that was uh, yeah. more about the existing functionality. Yeah, probably uh -huh. we should do with the roadmap. Yeah. Right, right, right. So there's another question by Spike101. Will it be possible to browse the issues and maybe create new merge requests and corresponding work branches for issues from within the IDE? Uh, browsing issues, no. Uh, as I said, just the previous mm -hmm. question, at least it is not yet planned. Creating merge requests, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, we are mm -hmm. currently working on integrating this into the push flow. Uh, mm -hmm. And probably we would just add another option when you can uh, right click on some commit in log, for example, and create from there. Yeah, so creating mm -hmm. would be possible, browsing issues not mm -hmm. on the table yet. Right, so another question, but I think that's similar to what uh, you already answered about not being able to see uh, view the option for on prem GitLab. So Luke already answered this question. So if you can scroll uh, the messages, you would get to know uh, the solution. So moving on to the next question, when adding suggested changes, will there be full IntelliSense capabilities by load? Yeah, great question, Load. Uh, the reason we haven't added uh, the controls like on the web to basically render a markdown there is exactly that we want this functionality to give more than web. Uh, one of the ideas is actually, you just go ahead and directly edit the file. Now you get your Git markers. Uh, like when I start a structure, mm -hmm. and you create suggested changes right from there. So from this point of view, you have all the power of IntelliJ with all the uh, completions, uh, like all the inspections. And then you just, instead of committing it a local repository, you just send it as a suggested change. Uh, that's what we have mm -hmm. in mind. Okay, so the next question. We have a lot of questions coming in now, Dimitri. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's, uh, there's on the homepage in a project the possibility to open directly at clone the repo in the IDE via HTTPS. Uh, can show us how to open IntelliJ with this function directly from the GitLab homepage. It's not yet done. Okay. Uh, oh, no, sorry. Uh, can mm -hmm. you share my screen? Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, yes. yes. I think that if we go here in GitLab, and we click clone, we have a couple links. And what it does, uh, it basically requires you to have a toolbox app. But if you have a JetBrains toolbox, 
it would directly uh, clone and open the project in uh, idea. idea. Okay. For now, that's it. Uh, we also were talking about, uh, so with together with GitLab team, about actually uh, allowing to open the project right from the merge request. So having a button somewhere here, uh, for example, I don't know, uh, like or next to edit, like opening the ID, I don't know. So or here, yeah, something like that. So probably something could appear, but like don't uh, consider it as a commitment. We were talking about that, but like no, no, basically uh, plans, exact plans are out yet. Yeah. You never know the person would come back and say, Dimitri, you promised on the live stream we have a recording. <laughs> well, right. disclaimer, disclaimer. Uh, we also <laughs> plans. We are do thinking about this. We might implement mm -hmm. it in a way, uh, some way or another. Like what mm -hmm. I definitely can say, we are doing a review in editor mode. This is in mm -hmm. progress, so I'm pretty confident I can share it. Mm -hmm. uh, we are doing creation of merge requests. Uh, mm -hmm. Other things are more or less hypothetical. <laughs> <laughs> Good <Yes>. to say that. <laughs> <laughs> so there's another question by Anshuman, and he mentions any JetBrains space application with one inline Kotlin Elvis function for Google Cloud AI BQML API. Uh, so also have probably the questions to the space team. I'm not exactly sure how mm -hmm. the space apps uh, do work now. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay. well, mm -hmm. uh, IntelliJ is uh, quite different from uh, space. So I don't have the knowledge of space uh, internals. Mm -hmm. Right. Makes sense. So this is a question by Annie. So this is a part of the question. Uh, the person mentions that they're using the paid idea plugin for GitLab merge request by IP, mm -hmm. I can't pronounce yeah, yeah. the <laughs> okay. like, uh, Majora right. software. Okay. Yes, this will replace so, it. Uh, we okay. uh, talked to the author of that plugin. We basically collaborated with, them, with him on some things. Mm -hmm. um, we might take some features from it also. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so the idea is basically that uh, our integration is going to replace uh, that plugin. So uh, another, yeah, sorry. You wanted to mention yeah. something? Yeah, no, 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 I think I, I think okay. <laughs> okay. So another question again about uh, CI/CD and um, so which you already mentioned that it's in the pipeline and you are working on it. Yeah, it's in the plans. So, it's in the plans. Yes. Uh, so this um, Duke mentioned. Thanks for the answer for the previous question. And there's another question: Will it work with fleet dev containers? Is something that runs in the remote server or local client? Mm, what exactly? So, uh, what was the previous question from Puke? From uh, uh, let me what? scroll. Yes, let me just. Uh, yes, so this was the question. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. So I answered that that one won't work. In so the GitLab integration itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are talking about mm -hmm. Fleet. Fleet is a separate okay. IDE. Uh, it oh. is not IntelliJ, uh, uh, because basically all the UI is brand new, a lot of concepts are brand new. Yes, it can use IntelliJ as backend, but like all the uh, user experience is different. Mm -hmm. uh, so as a question for Fleet, uh, I'm not sure when they're going to get the GitLab integration. I hope they will, uh, but mm -hmm. they have now more important things to do yet. Uh, dev containers. So if you are talking about remote dev, when you are running idea in remote dev mode, yes, of course, GitLab will be there because it's idea. It doesn't matter if it's a remote or local. Okay. So there's another, uh, I don't know whether it's a statement comment because it's definitely not a question. I've installed IntelliJ ID in Windows 7 in 8.1 and running its parallel Kotlin squeeze data function for it. Do so, we still support Windows 7? I thought we are not <laughs> official. <laughs> okay, so, so this is the last question. What about from Robert? What about the CI CD outside of GitLab CI, for example, Jenkins that could be integrated with GitLab via dedicated plugin? Well, uh, dedicated plugin for other things might already exist. Check out the plugins actually. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, if we're talking about that, you have GitLab running some external CI. Still, mm -hmm. that CI reports back to GitLab. So GitLab is an entry point. And mm -hmm. as I imagine, uh, our integration for CI CD would basically 
uh, handle. So GitLab reports that there are some CD failures. And if it provides enough API, we, of course, could handle it for any external service. It depends on the level of integration between GitLab and that. Jenkins, for example, yeah. Uh, well, talking about separate plugins for Jenkins, like uh, I haven't heard about plans yet. Okay, so this question is about which IntelliJ IDA version we will see the GitLab integration. So which is the it's, recent one, 23.2? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's there. Uh, mm -hmm. And like more improvements coming in mm -hmm. the future. So the next version already I should have some. Yes. So with that, we are done with the questions. A lot of questions coming in, and I hope you can use some of these questions to prepare the next uh, plan. You are planning to kind of answer the questions by folks who are using or looking forward to use this feature in IntelliJ IDEA. Yeah. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks, everyone, for submitting questions. Mm -hmm. uh, a remark, mm -hmm. if you have some issues, if you have proposals, if you want basically to ask to add something, please submit a request, either to support or to our tracker. We do, we do look through all of them. <laughs> so uh, some more comments coming in. It's basically thank you notes, shout out to Anshuman. The team is loving your questions, but I think you might have this live stream confused with Google. <laughs> Google, sorry. <laughs> so there's another one. Uh, we can't wait to see it develop. Uh, look, it's already, Thank you can try trust. it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's already, some part of it has already been done and you can try it out right now. Of course, after you download the latest version 23.2. Uh, thanks for the insights. And CodeNut says thanks. Um, so there's another one. Excited to get our GitLab updated to 15.11. Wow, that's great. Okay, so thanks everyone. Uh, so Charles also says many thanks. A lot of comments coming in now. So very informative he mentions. So thanks everyone. Um, Dimitri, it was a great presentation. Thank you so much for presenting it. And, Thank um, you for having me. Oh, it was fun. The question answers so many of them. <laughs> um, and thanks, everyone, for attending and asking questions, for being a great audience. Big thanks to everyone at JetBrains for making this live stream possible. And stay tuned for our next IntelliJ IDEA live stream on Thursday, 28th September, where Josie from Oracle will talk about Java 21, which releases this month. And uh, Dimitri, before we close the stream, are there any closing remarks from you or should we just say bye? Uh, well, that's great that we have a lot of loyal users like you. Thank you for being with us and thank you for the trust that we set. We are trying to build the best tools just for you. <laughs> That was great. So until next, uh, yes, these are the social links that you can follow to know more about uh, uh, what we are doing at JetBrains and IntelliJ IDEA uh, in specific. Um, subscribe to the channel, like the video. Yes, don't miss this part so that you don't miss the notifications for the new live stream and videos we have. So until next time, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.